What's happening? Welcome back to this edition, the end of the year recap edition. And what you're about to hear and see on this edition is something epic from 2020. Two, oh, man. we went through a lot of adversity, but we still here. What's happening? We standing strong, man. It's your favorite plus size model, two tone rays. The Behind the Mask podcast, we start from the beginning of 2020. So where we are now, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, all the incredible guests, all the incredible stories. And, you know, people like myself that won bets and people like my man, the host, Mr. Tequila Spikes, that lost bets. You got punched in the face, though. Why right, you got to bring up old shit, man? Come on, man. Hey, on the Behind the Mask podcast, there are one rule. There, there are, are no rules. Check it out. We got some great giveaways also. But what you got to do is you got to follow us on social media at the BTM Podcast. Continue to subscribe, share, get that content out there with us. Uh, leave us some messages. You know what I'm saying? We like to communicate too. And make sure you follow us anywhere you get your podcast content. Behind the Mask Podcast 2020 was great. 2021 is going to be even better. Let's go behind the mask. Welcome back to a... Hold up. No. We can't even say welcome back to another edition. This is the recap edition of 2020. And we got to talk about it. Like, 2020 was full of surprises. 2020 was full of adversity. But before I even get into it, though, let me bring in my partner, man, that goes... By two ton, but most people know him as the your favorite plus size model two ton Ray is in the building. What's happening, my boy? Hey man, another day in paradise, baby. Slow motion in the ocean. Everything is gravy. Yeah, man. Everything's gravy though. But I'm 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 over here starting off the show and I'm thinking, like, all right, welcome <laughs> back to another edition. But this is a special edition. This yeah. is the recap edition of BTM, the award-winning podcast of 2020. Yeah. And, um, man, we got a lot of great stories to recap, recount also. Yeah, 2020 was great, man. And, and to your point, the ups, the downs, or what we thought 2020 was going to be, what it turned out to be. I mean, who would have thought we'd be in a position that we are right now? I mean, we started off doing everything in studio now. Everything has to, uh, we had to do the broadcast virtually. And we're going to get into that, but the ups and downs overall a great year for btm btm media the behind the mask podcast man let's talk yeah. about it man bro bro like straight up though it was like i think you said it best started out in the studio then we had to go back inside confined because of you know the obvious the pandemic but one of the guys who i think about who we had on before we went to the virtual setting Man, shout out to our dog, Clinton Portis. Yeah. I think about his time as a rookie in Denver, running back, drafted with the high expectations. And he came in with a chip on his shoulder. He talked about that. This is my time to shine. I'm already mad because you drafted me 51st. Like, this didn't have, this issue was bigger than TD. This issue was bigger than anybody. I'm mad you drafted me 51st. I walked out of your meeting because it was too late and y'all already had three, y'all had 3,000 yard backs on your on, on your roster. And like for me, the thing that really stood out to me, bro, was CP said he remember going out on rookie night on a Friday before the last game of the season. Yeah. And after he went out on that Friday, on that Sunday, he said he was still too drunk to play the game. And he was like, you know what? I made my mind up. Let me just go in and just talk to coach and just tell him. I just can't play up under these circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was crazy, man. We had a uh, rookie night mm. on Friday night. I was still drunk Sunday when the game came. Dang. That's how crazy our rookie night was. Damn. And I'm That's at the been. stadium. I'm getting ready to walk into that's coach office. I'm getting ready to walk into coach office and say, Coach, I can't play under these conditions. <laughs> and Hold on. <laughs> under your conditions? Yeah, I can't. I can't you were about under. to take your butt in and say I didn't that? No, it's not knowing. Yeah. But I was actually about to go in and say, Coach, I can't play. This is what's wrong with me. Shannon Sharp stopped me and said, CP, what you doing? How do you even think to go and tell your head coach you can't play because you're too drunk? 
from 48 hours before, man. It made no sense. No, it was <laughs> it, it was a memorable moment. And thank God for Shannon Sharp. Thank yeah. God for having the true vets. Because dog, like, like the most knowledge that's really passed around when you play this game mm -hmm. is in those settings to where you're in the locker room. In those settings to where after you train together in the summertime, and then you have those small group settings and you really talk and open up. Shannon told him, he was like, listen, bro, like, there's no way in hell you can walk in that office and say you can't play up under these circumstances because you still hung oh, over. Man. That that ain't it. That ain't it at all, man. That was crazy. And you know what? To your point, Shannon Sharp saved CP. He had one of his best games of his, of his career. He said it was the best game. So, you know, shout out to Shannon Sharp. Shout out to CP. That was crazy. Life was wild in the league for real, man. Yeah, it, it was, bro. Like, very wild. But that, the thing about it, I thought was very impressive. He went out there and gave him 200 the last game of the year yeah. score. Best yeah. game of the year. Probably, he said, one of his best performances of all time. Yeah. So, CP, cheers to you on that, my brother. Salute. Hey, salute. you deserve a cold or dope beverage, my dog. Mm -hmm. And it's not even in season anymore. Now, moving on. When we look at Super Bowl. Super Bowl came up right after that. And mm -hmm. we were fortunate enough to take the BTM podcast on the road. Yeah. Right down at the Lowe's, host hotel of the NFL. And, man, we just sat down and we conducted interviews the entire time while yeah. we were there. You know, talking to a lot of guys there. Um, I remember even speaking with, well, the representatives who represented Kansas City in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You look at Tony Richardson. You know, you look at Donnie Edwards. Hey, this is T. Rich. Got my man here, Donnie Edwards. We're right here on South Beach. We're, we're about to record the Behind the Mask podcast. You guys make sure you tune in. Check it out. We'll tell you the inside, what's going on, and how the Chiefs are going to get this victory. And me representing the 49ers, we going back and forth, bro. Like, I thought that was real cool because we really got an opportunity. Um, neither one of us actually won the Super Bowl, played in it. <laughs> really? But just to actually be there and support your team, man, like, that, that was a cool experience. I can't lie, bro. Yeah, that was dope, man. And, and, and to have Behind the Mask, the podcast, actually at the host hotel for the NFL, that's unheard of. There were no other media outlets stationed at the, home uh, at the NFL host hotel except for the Behind the Mask podcast. So we did the damn thing on that, man. We got to see all the greats out there. And I think of just walking through the hotel, seeing the Joe Montanas, Jerry Rice, Lawrence Taylor, you know, up to the new guys, Aaron Donald, you know what I mean? Uh, Willie Rove, seeing him up there, Julius Pepper, some of my former yeah. teammates. Man, that was crazy. It was like every time we went down to grab something to eat, it took a break. We seen some of the guys that we used to either play with, play against, or that we admire coming up. So that in itself was a crazy dope experience, man. And not to mention it was on South Beach, so that was great. Oh, no, no doubt, bro. I, I, I would say my best takeaway from that trip, I'm in the hotel lobby. I run into Barry Sanders. Yeah. And I'm like, Barry, what's up? Look, I need to see you anyway. Working <laughs> on volume two, behind the mask with the book, baby. Facts. Running backs. What's happening? So, you know, I mean, so I gave him a book. He was very appreciative. So we looking forward to see what happens out of volume two, especially from running into Barry Sanders, one of the true goats mm -hmm. that the NFL has to offer. Yeah. One of my takeaways from that event was the, the Super Bowl. We talked about it. We made a bet, brother, and you lost the bet. The Niners win. I got to go on Ocean Drive. And streak down South Beach. <laughs> if the Chiefs win, you gotta go on Ocean Drive. Pause. Street down South Beach. <laughs> Hold on now. You can say no. Listen. We can always cut it. Hold up. <laughs> I only got one problem with that. I've looked at the forecast and at nighttime, <laughs> it's gonna be a little chilly, so it would be advantageous <laughs> of neither one of us. Going <laughs> and I, I must admit, you're a man of your word because later on in the year you made up for that yeah, bet, yeah, yeah, but you, you had to run yeah. on the beach, buck 
ball, nigga. <laughs> you had to get it in. But you, yo, you a man of your word, man, and you lived up to your best. So salute for that, bro. I'm a man of my word, bro. I am That's a man great. of my word. That's but great. at least I ain't the one who trying to get it confused or mistaken to where they put their ego in front of who they really are and they step into a ring <laughs> with a hungry boxer in another country, Cuba. So you almost got your ass knocked out in Cuba. Right. <laughs> Yo, man, look, man. Why you gotta bring up old shit? <laughs> why, why up old shit? <laughs> we recap it, bro. That's the, way, that's the reason why. Hey, man, look. I, needless to say, I ain't going back to Cuba. I'm damn sure not boxing no more. But yo, talk about traveling. How about we had Dion Grant, DG, our boy, usual suspects partner, and Pat Willis on the show on two different episodes this year, talking about the time we went to Rio and Pat Willis almost did not make it back man so pat comes down like hey guys you know that dude comes out with the ak speaking in, in portuguese da, 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 da. pat's like <laughs> <laughs> we're like no no please don't, don't kill him he's, he's scared pat is sitting like oh my god pat will is out there he you know what he said he was he wasn't as scared and that we were embellishing and Dion was embellishing on the fact that the guy had an AK-47 or AR-15 it was pointed at him but Pat bro you almost ain't make it back man I mean all of a sudden I just heard somebody say no 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 and I was like I was like I dropped it there when I put it there I thought it was him and I was like he's like no 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 I was like oh shut and I dropped I tried to cut it off I was like no look look it's off I was trying to show him it was off I feel like I was in a movie. Yeah, we would have been, we would have felt like shit if, if you did not go back to continue to play in the NFL because we wanted to go to Rancine and go in the hood and just take some pictures. That that wouldn't have been a good look at all, man. Listen, bro, what you failing to remember is like we talking about Pat. Yeah. But shit, if he would not have came back, what make you think we would have came we back? We wouldn't have came back and tell the story neither. <laughs> There's no way we would have came back, bro. Like, I love that. I love and like, that. I know, like, DG and Pat, like they go back and forth at it. And I think the big thing though, bro, is like I remember seeing, I just knew I was gonna have to hear Pat's mouth after that. <laughs> Cause Pat was just like, man, God, damn, man, I done told you, Spike. I knew we should not have went up there. And then the only thing I would I would have just like, fuck, oh, man, I gotta, I gotta take it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? But it, it was a great trip for us overall, brother. Yeah. I think that. We, we definitely got what we needed out of it more than anything. Oh, yeah, most of that's most of that. So we got to give some love to DJ and Pat, you know what I'm saying, to make it 2020 memorable. That 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 was dope. That was Cheers, dope. Cheers, brother. Cheers. Salute, salute, salute. Salute. Yeah, man, we had some more incredible guests. How about everybody who was getting on us for uh, – we had our whole girl Quad come on the show, bro. We were talking about relationships. That that was that was a memorable moment. What, what, what you remember about that one, man? Yo, shout out to Quad. Yeah, uh, love her to death. She, the authenticity. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I'm gonna outcook her anyway one day <laughs> with her own cookbook. For sure. For Hopefully, sure. she doesn't hear that part. I want to. <laughs> but the thing I remember about that is, you know, she was like, "Listen." I'm, we just do what y'all do as men. I got Ooh. four of them in the stable. Run them. Run them. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I appreciate that good, authentic feedback because, like, at the end of the day, bro, like, like we all talk to somebody. Yeah. And I think that's where the disappointment comes when we look at relationships. We feel like, as dudes, this is where we're guilty. We're guilty. We feel like, well, shit, she shouldn't be over there talking to somebody. She shouldn't be doing this. Right. Well, got to ask yourself the question. Are you doing the same thing? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, um, I, I think she really provided a lot of insight to that, bro. Yeah. And, like, actually, the shit was so good. Like, I, we can't even recap it. We just got to bring this up, man. Check this out, though. But I'm most certainly dating. I got about four of them in the roster right now. I'm, a yes, drop, I'm, I'm about to drop one of them, though. Why are you going to drop them? <laughs> I, I, he just, up. It's too much capping. Don't so, I, so, I, so, so if you have four of them, 
how do you know which one that you're moving up, you know? That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's moving up the ladder. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be the one. So when you're ready, you be like, you know what? This is the person I'm cutting the rest He's of the He's going to show me that. He's going to make me he's going to make me feel that he's going to be so good to me that he's completely outstanding the rest of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I got four horses in the race right now. <laughs> Run it, baby. And it's so crazy, like to be so unapologetic about what you feel, what you do in your space when you're dating. I think that was the most realist uh, thing that. I felt from the episode and people were chiming in. Women were chiming in like, yeah, it's about time. Y'all seen it because y'all do the same thing. And, you know, we like, what's this y'all shit? What y'all talk about y'all? Like, you know what I'm saying? But Quad laid it out in terms of how confident she is in her walk when it comes to dating. And I think for me, we got to catch up with Quad to find out if one of them four, uh, four, four horses actually finished the derby, finished the race. 2020 coming to an end and, you know, see if somebody still is around and, 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 and <laughs> gave some Christmas gifts and, you know, it's cuffing season. So Valentine's Day is coming up. So we got to chime back in with Carl, catch up with her and see what she's talking about on which one of them horses actually finished the race. Yeah, you better make sure she doesn't follow up and ask you, why do men date without an end goal? Yeah, I, yeah, you're absolutely right. But you know what? On the Behind the Mask podcast, there's only one rule. <laughs> There are no rules. So if she follows up, we got to run it. That's just what we do, man. Run it, baby. Run it. <laughs> and then what about your boy? You brought your boy Justin Gatlin on. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, 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 like, listen, man, I'm a big fan of Jay Gat. Love what he was able to do. And um, I really appreciate that. You know, the thing that really just jumped out to me was him owning up yeah. to where he fell short. Talked about the PED uses, being suspended, and now coming back, having the opportunity to run against Usain Bolt and beating him. Like, yeah. I was like, damn, like, you know, put me in that mindset, bro. So that was the cool part for me to be able to actually talk with him and just see, like, like you know, like, what's that mindset like, man? Yeah, and, and for him to literally take us from the blocks throughout the race, the first 20, 30 meters on to the finish, crossing that line and what happens. And then not to mention, that was probably the, the, the greatest, one of the greatest moments of his track career, overcoming adversity, you know what I'm saying? On the mountaintop, beating the greatest of all time. But then he got booed right after that. So that's crazy. Just, you know, you want people to relish in, in, in your moment but the fans were like, nah, we didn't forget about some of the negative things that you've done in your past. So the fans didn't particularly get over it in that race. But to Gat's uh, point, it just shows you the, the perseverance, how to overcome adversity. And for him to really just open up those layers for us and peel back those layers for us and let us go behind the mask with a track athlete, I think that was unparalleled. And I definitely appreciate Justin Gatlin. Um, we also had Christy Castlin on as well, another track athlete. So for those two individuals to step medalist. You know, across, yeah, yeah, medalist, medalist, Olympic medalist to, to come to the football side and really share with us, I think that was just totally amazing, man. Yeah, and you know, you know, we talk about 2020, the adversity, what they went through, but man, let's talk about the adversity that we went through and. I mean, shit, the pandemic. We, I never thought that I would be living to see something that would happen that affects everybody in every way, mm -hmm. meaning from a CEO all the way down to a janitor that works at school. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it encompasses everything, man. And, and, and just to think about, you know, where we are at, where we came from at that time and where we are now. Um, big shout out to everybody. We are a resilient group of people. Yeah. And I do represent that. And I say that representing from the, the American side because it's been tough too. It's yeah. been very tough to be able to deal with that. And even, even going forward, looking at all of the, the civil unrest, mm -hmm. the, the social injustices, compiled on top of that i think of you know brianna taylor i think of you know george floyd 
Ahmaud Arbery, all of these things that went on and yet and still we're still here fighting for a fundamental right, yeah. you know, our civil rights as people. Yeah, man, and it was amazing. And you talked about some of those those moments that we faced this year and, and dealing with COVID. Everybody, to your point, has to deal with or knows with one degree of separation away from knowing somebody that's impacted or affected by COVID. Heck, we were in our own way, you know, family members or, or friends that we know that have either had the virus or, or some people might have not made it from the virus. And it was great for us to step out of our comfort zone and actually have Dr. Spikes, your sister, and Dr. Sumner on to speak about COVID-19 and, and where the trajectory is for the United States alone in rural areas and uh, of, of rural areas across America. And it just shows you, it was almost a precursor to where we are right now because they hit it on the head. Based upon what I'm hearing right now, no, it's not seasonal. And again, it's so many unknowns about it. They're hypothesizing and hoping that as the temperatures become warmer, that that would inactivate the virus. Um, but the risk of it respiking once the fall fall season comes around is predicted to climb. But right now, they still do not know. So it's still so many uncertainties. What to expect if we don't social distance? What to expect if we don't mask up? What to expect if we don't really follow the protocols or what to do to get out of this pandemic? Some people in America didn't do it for whatever reason. And we're still in the same place, man. Still in the same place right now. Bro, and, I, and I'll tell you this, and this is the one thing that I took away from that. And I encourage everybody to go back and see that interview with Dr. Jean Sumner. She's the Dean of Mercer University School mm. of Medicine. And she clearly talked about pulling up to her house and she saw some kids outside on their tablets. And she asked him, like, what are you doing? Yeah. And the kids looked up her, looked at her and said, Dr. Sumner, like, this is the only way that we can do our homework because we don't have internet. Yeah. And so when we talk about the pandemic, everything that we've been through from the adversity standpoint, it definitely brings ahead and a bigger point to the discrepancies and the digital divide when it comes to who is really affected when all of this is going on. And it was much a much needed episode. Um, in addition to that, with the civil unrest, we were fortunate enough to have Georgia's Attorney General Chris Carr come on the show and just tell us what it means for him and what his role is when it comes to uh, dealing with these issues of, of social injustice and dealing with the issues in Georgia, et cetera. So how he fights for all Americans and their constitutional rights. So I think that was dope too. And think about it, Spikes. We had an Attorney General on to go behind the mask with us. So, you know, some of the high points of, of the year, that's definitely one of them for me. I cannot imagine the fear that Ahmaud Arbery felt coming around that pickup truck. And I can't mm. imagine the fear that George Floyd felt when he was on the street in Minneapolis. It's the same thing on a, I may not have the same life experience as either one of those gentlemen or you guys, but as a human being, I most certainly can appreciate that fear. Just him being transparent, him being very clear, authentic about the fact, and that was right around the time, and I mentioned it earlier, Ahmaud Arbery, he was murdered, brutally murdered down in South Georgia. And him just talking about, look, this is not, a, 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 you know, this is not Democrats. This is not a Republican thing. This is the law. And this is what my job is to do to make sure I uphold the law being the attorney general for the state of Georgia. So very great interview that we had with him. And he he hit on some hot topic points that I feel like even now through this time period, we're still watching and therefore he's still being held accountable, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man. And I think the bonus for, for, for all of that, is we we finally did it, man. We finally got our mothers on the Behind the Mask podcast, bro. <laughs> Yo, shout out Queen B, Mama Spikes. Shout like, out to Mama P. Listen, 
they support us in everything we do, obviously. But one thing, they don't get behind the mic, bro, or behind the camera. <laughs> they don't. Well, at least I know with my mom, I, I embarrass her all the time. She actually loves it, though. But uh, she is um, – that was the cool thing. That was the bonus piece that we definitely got out. And I, I would say this, even going back, looking at that interview and just recalling it, looking at pictures in my phone, I could truly say when I see my mom, when my, me and my mother take pictures, like she is truly proud of me, man. Yeah. Like, and I don't think I ever really realized that until like now I was forced to sit down this year and just look and just see the joy in her face. Now she still chews me out, and if anybody knows her, as you do, and they know yeah, me, yeah. Like, like she don't give a shit. Like she don't tell you like this, <laughs> which I love that shit. Yeah, no, I love it. But yeah. you know, it's uh, it was cool to be able to get moms on, man, and and uh, really show them a little love because they deserve it. Yeah, that Mother's Day special was incredible, and, and to have them on, man, the smiles on their face. You know what I mean? It, you couldn't hide it. There wasn't no faking it. They, as, as nervous as they were, one thing they did was smile. <laughs> that means they were happy and they, like you said, they yep. were proud of us, man. So that was dope. Another another one, we, we finally got the kids on. You know what I mean? We, we got Ja'Kai, your daughter on, and, and, and my son Ty, my daughter, Samaya in London, they they came on. And um, that was great, but they 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 were real authentic and they ripped us a little bit, man. They, they, they didn't hold back. So that was cool. Uh, to be able to see the world through their lenses, I think that was amazing. Yeah, it was. And you know, I give my daughter a lot of shit anyway. <laughs> like your mom gives you. <laughs> yeah, I do. Get it on us. Deal with right. it. But you know, it was uh it was cool though, because I remember when I was trying to hug her, she always be like, Dad, why you gotta grab me so hard? And my thing is it's like I miss you. Like, yeah. this is my way of showing affection. I don't give out church hugs. Like, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> like, when I, I need to feel you. I need to make sure you good. And so, like, whenever I did it during the show, she was like, mm, no, I'm not. No, I don't like that. You know what I mean? But that perfectly sums it up, man, when I, when I think about it overall, bro. Yeah, man. That love was just... It unconditionally flow through those interviews, and, and that's what I can appreciate, and that's what I love. And, and shout out to the Kai; she's a, she's a freshman at Auburn. Ty, he's doing his thing in grad school now. Maya and, and London are still in uh, high school and, and middle school, respectively. So, you know what? They, they the future, man. And, and as much as we were able to put smiles on our mother's face, they put smiles on our face, and that's what it's all about. No, oh, no doubt, bro. And you talk about the future. I remember talking about, and it was a big shock to everybody. Mm. Deion Sanders becomes the yeah. head coach at Jackson State. Yeah. And what did we do? We go out and we call our player partner, yeah. Hugh Douglas, mm -hmm. one of the black college football Hall of Fame all-time greats. Yeah. And he comes on and just talks about the experience. Well, to have Prime do that, man, I mean, that's huge. You know, before all this COVID hit, mm -hmm. that he was going to be real instrumental in having the HBCU combine. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, he called a lot of us to come in and just try to help and mentor these kids to help them get to the next level. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And now to see him actually coaching at an HBCU, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's like for anybody who went to HBCU, to see him do that, I mean, everybody kind of feels like the sky's the limit. Yeah. Uh, i tell you something that was also even cool is now, fast forward, we did not know this when Dion took that job, mm -hmm. but both of his sons are now transferring, coming yeah. over to play for their father. Like, bro, like, we always talk about making a change. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you got some people, I call them like old yeller. They'll sit on the porch and bark. Ain't gonna bite nothing. <laughs> That's all they gonna do. But shout out to Prime, Coach Prime, for sure. For sure. because he was like, you know what I'm gonna do is versus me complaining. Let me go back into my community and mm -hmm. uplift and raise these young men by creating a platform 
and bringing other solid mentors around me to be able to get them get them where they need to go. Like, yeah. man, that's for me, that was huge, bro. I, I really appreciate that. Tremendous. And you see some other uh, young student athletes that were going to like a UGA or maybe had an opportunity to graduate transfer and could have went to another Division One FBS school, but they're coming to the FCS level and competing at Jackson State University, a, a historically a black college. And they have the number one recruiting class in FCS history. Crazy. Just because everybody that has transferred and obviously his sons that are coming over, um, the number one HBCU class, I should say, uh, in history. So that that's just amazing. Shout out to, to Coach Prime and again Hugh Douglas for for shedding the light on that um, when he came on the show during Black College Week. So that that was amazing, man. Some some great football gonna be played down there at uh, at Jackson State. So I'm looking forward to it, man. Man, everything is gonna be amped up. Oh yeah, you already know what prom down there. You already know it. <laughs> hey, the pep rally. <laughs> Halftime show, the band. Halftime show, <laughs> game show. Yeah. Oh, hell. Oh, the tailgating. Oh, my God. It's going to oh, be stupid. Man. It's going to be nuts, man. Yeah, man. Great year for football. We talked about it. We also had a nephew on DK Metcalf, man. He, he came on the show and blessed us right before for a training camp and, um, you know, told us what he felt this year was going to be like for him and for the Seattle Seahawks. From all of the time that you put in throughout this offseason that you've been doing, uh, give us some insight on what should we expect from DK Metcalf in his second year. Um, a lot of touchdowns, <clears throat> a lot of yards, and that's it. And we gonna we gonna make a playoff run this year. Do you feel so, added pressure to to help the team make a playoff run? I mean, you were a rookie, but clearly you wanted to go to guys on that offense. Is that pressure on you now? I don't believe in pressure. Um, precious, I need a stress, and I live stress free. I just go out there and just be me. I kind of ride right there. Hey. I mean, he was a, a, a prophet. He, he literally spoke it into existence in terms of what was going to happen. He said he was going to have a great year, and um, man, he's he's killing it right now. Yeah, you damn right, he's killing. Yeah, he's killing don't it. be coy about right. it either. Like DK came on, he said, "Look, I put in the work." I know we're going through a pandemic. I've been working with Russ in the off season. It's time to let everything shine. Yeah. And now you look at it, they have one more game to play. Mm -hmm. And he's, if I'm not mistaken, he may have broken the single season record for most yards in a season by a receiver. Mm -hmm. And that was held by Steve Largent yeah. back in, you know, I'm a football head, 1985. I don't know how I remember that, but I remember that. <laughs> but, but when, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when we talk about what BTM is about, we go behind the mask, see what the training is like. Everybody has a mask. How can you become vulnerable? I think DK Metcalf is a prime example of, of letting people know, like, man, if you put that work in, if you're blessed enough and to have enough focus, mm -hmm. hold on. If you can focus, that's the main thing. Yeah, if you're blessed sure. enough to have the athletic ability, focus, focus, focus. Yeah, yeah. And he definitely does that. He comes from a huge, tremendous lineage of, of, of athletes. His dad, my my brother, my former roommate at Ole Miss, Terrence Metcalf, he was in the league and, and is, is passed down to DK. He's doing just a great job. Made his first Pro Bowl this year. Second year in the NFL, made his first Pro Bowl. And he has... More importantly, he has the respects of the veterans. Yeah. As a young player, the better cornerbacks and, and linebackers, safeties, defensive backs in the NFL, they respect this young man. And he's doing it, you know, the right way, off the field, on the field, model citizen. Shout out to, to, to DK, uh, his, his dad, Terrence, mom's tiny, that whole Metcalf family doing a great job raising a tremendous young man. And like you said, Spice, is showing on the field. That focus is there, man. Yeah. And you talk about that being a highlight, um, a big part of what we've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. Mm. We cannot forget about the award winning. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm sorry. We didn't cheers to that, bro. Cheers. DK Metcalf. We might have to do another one to us, too. Go ahead. Proceed. Yeah. So. 
Now, God, that was so good. Okay, but <laughs> now when we look at this year, man, we we are now a, an award winning podcast platform. Here are the nominees for best sports review podcast. And the winner is Behind the Mask. Behind the Mask. Hey! <laughs> run it, run it, run it. Hey, best sports I podcast. Drink to that. Did you heard? About to drink to that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard, you heard. You, heard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shots fired, yeah. man. We've yeah. and we've done all of this in such a short time period. In a year's time, and uh, very ecstatic about winning the Black Podcast Award for the best sports review podcast out there. We were actually nominated for three, two. Yeah, yeah, we were nominated for three, man. That that in of itself, in and of itself, is amazing. Just the first year out the blocks to get nominated for three awards. We only got one. I'm, I'm and I'm gracious. I'm happy. I'm blessed. Thank you to everybody on the Black Podcasting Awards. For for uh, everybody that voted for for nominating and voting for the Behind the Mask podcast, Spikes, we won it all three, man. The competitive I, nature, I won all three, <laughs> all three, man. I, man. Listen, I, I wanted all three. Shit, I, I felt like man, we I'm deserved just, it. Yeah, we deserved it. Like we're going behind the mask. Okay, yeah. so, um, and I remember, you know what? Let's pull up the clip though, because I th- I can't. Re- <laughs> that was hilarious. This clip to where I felt like we were going to win the best overall. Man, check out this reaction. Here are the nominees for podcast of the year. <laughs> Listen, I told you we, we felt like we deserved it. That's all I'm hey, saying. That's a behind the mask moment right there. That's the but we we haven't showed that. We we were sitting at your house and we were watching the podcast and awards and we were recording it and then you just you just let it out, man. True true how you felt, authentic, raw, behind the mask. That's that's what it's about, man. Man, that's what it, hey, authenticity, man. Yeah, like man. you know, because we don't commit black on black crime, it's okay. Yeah. This time, they're not winning all three. No doubt. Hey, you know what? It does give us something to reach for this next year. You know what I mean? So to continue to move on and to grow in what we're doing, we're coming for everything, man. We're coming for more awards and, and you know, we want it all. We're not we're not selling, selling for less, selling for, for, for mediocre. We want it all. Hey, bro, I think a, a, a clean way to be able to say that is this we are going to empty the clip in 2021 no stone will be unturned and it ain't no it won't be any conversations like well what if we would no nah, we ain't doing that yeah. so you know with that being said my brother listen cheers to a great year man cheers to a great year we appreciate everybody that supported the behind the mass podcast behind the mass media um, everything we do, the whole Behind the Mask team, everybody that supported, that is downloaded, listened, viewed, commented, shared, subscribed, uh, clowned us, talked about us in positive or negative. We love all the feedback, and we're going to continue to bring you out more great content, more great guests, amazing untold stories, and uh, keep setting that bar higher and higher for 2021. Great year, 2020. 2021 is going to be even better. Cheers. Salute.